Nine days have passed since I started using the Moto X as my personal device, and in this day nine update video, we are talking about the 10 megapixel camera. Sit back and join me, and I'll tell you how it compares to the Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. So we've talked a lot in the nine days about the Moto X between the review and between the 30 day challenge, but one thing I did not cover, and I did this deliberately, was the camera because I wanted to do a whole 30 day challenge update video dedicated to the 10 megapixel shooter. So I'm gonna kick right in by double flipping the wrist and you see it activates the camera and we are ready to rock and roll. Now the camera setup here is pretty basic. Swipe to the left to access your quick notifications or not your notifications, rather your camera shortcuts if you will. And I can see right here by clicking that I can get help, tap anywhere to take a photo, drag up and down to zoom, swipe each side for settings and gallery. It's a very simplistic approach in comparison to what we've seen from Samsung with the Galaxy S4 and even from HTC with the One. I can swipe between my gallery and quickly go back to my live shot. And you can see down here, I can flip it to the front facing camera and flip it to the camcorder as well. So flip over here to the left with me. We'll take a look. You've got HDR options right here. I've got my flash options right here. I can tape the focus off. Tap to focus is enabled. We'll tap and it will focus and capture exactly. Slow motion video, then you get panorama, you get your geolocator or your tag, you get shutter tone on and off, and then you get the quick capture, which I just used to twist my wrist. Twist it twice and it activates the camera. That sounds like a dance. Twist it twice and it activates the camera. So you can see right here, just by zooming in, if I wanna zoom in on the box, for example, Click right there, it'll zoom in, and the picture automatically takes. Now what's a little bit frustrating about this, there's no dedicated camera button. So you're almost relying on the camera. So for example, if I throw you know, a pin in the floor and I take a picture just for sake of example, I can zoom in, I can go down here and take a picture of the, cam uh, the pin and click right there and it'll zoom in. But when it zooms in, it takes the picture. I don't have the option to zoom in and not take the picture. It has to take the picture. So that's something that may frustrate some people. Also, the on-screen buttons stay on the screen, as you can see right here. And I can go around the room and just take a quick shot so you can take a look at the difference. We'll take a picture. But again, as you zoom in, if I'm zooming in on the door area, for example, or the carpet, you can see it takes the picture automatically. So something worth keeping in mind. 10 megapixels here. Camera quality is pretty mediocre so far for me. It's average, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. But that said, it's not nearly as good as the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, and I think you get a lot more in those opportunity-wise. The Galaxy S4, you get a ton of options. So just comparing this, for example, to something like the HTC One, imagine you're a consumer, you walk in, a normal consumer, and you walk into the store, and you see this, and you're messing around with the camera, and you see these really basic camera images, but then we'll go back into the live stuff here, and you get really this basic kind of look and feel. Then you see this. I've got the option to change the settings. I can go down through here and do night HDR sweet panorama. I can activate HTC Zoe if I want to. I can turn that off. I've got my Zoe video highlights. And then you come over here, and it's really just kind of a stock boring camera experience. I think that's what a lot of people, if they spend any time with the camera, are gonna find out about this device. And so if you're a camera buff, you're probably gonna stick with the Lumia 1020, the Galaxy S4, the HTC One, or even if you're not a camera buff, but you're looking for something that's a little bit heftier in the camera department, you're probably gonna stick with one of the competing devices. This thing has a lot of strengths. The customization is nice if you're on AT&T. The overall look and feel is nice. I love how this fits in the hand, but camera, it's decent, and if you get it, and camera's not that important to you, I don't think you'll hate it, but if camera's a priority feature for you within let's say the top three or top five, my thought at least right now, nine days in, after taking a couple of pictures, it's not worth going to this just for the camera. Keep it locked on phonedog.com. Hit me up on Twitter, phonedog underscore Aaron, and let me know what you think of the Moto X and what you wanna see covered in the 30 day challenge. I'm on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker, Google plus G plus dot T-O slash phone doc. Thanks for watching. Keep it locked right here as I continue my 30 day challenge with the Moto X. I'm Aaron Baker from phonedog.com and I'll see you next time.